In this lecture, we are going to review the White House Blueprint for an AI Bill of Rights. We will begin by looking at the office that published this document, the OSTP. We will then go over the five blueprint principles, which are safe and effective systems, algorithmic discrimination protections, data privacy, notice and explanation, and human alternatives, consideration, and fallback. So what is the White House OSTP? OSTP stands for the Office of Science and Technology Policy. This is an office within the White House. And the mission of the office is to advise the US president, strengthen American science and technology, work with the executive and legislative branches, engage with external partners across academia, industry, and local governments, and ensure equity, inclusion, and integrity in all aspects of science and technology. I don't think that you're gonna be tested on this for the AIGP exam, but again, I think it's important to know who authors documents and this little bit of extra context is likely helpful to you. These are the five blueprint principles. Again, they are safe and effective, algorithmic discrimination protections, data privacy, notice and explanation, and human alternatives, consideration, and fallback. We're going to be spending the rest of this lecture going over these. A helpful test tip for you as you're preparing. Likely by the end of domain two, you are going to be going absolutely nuts because there's a lot of redundancy throughout all of these different AI principles that we're going to look at. My recommendation is number one, understand the language. What does safe and effective mean? What does data privacy mean? What does notice and explanation mean? And I'm gonna be explaining those for you as we go along throughout the, this domain and throughout the rest of the, the course. These are gonna be concepts that we're gonna come back to again and again. Number two, and perhaps more importantly, with regards to test tips, remember the outliers. What sticks out in a particular set of principles? For example, with the White House blueprint for an AI Bill of Rights, number two listed here, algorithmic discrimination protections and human alternatives, consideration and fallback. Those are pretty unique to the White House blueprint that we see here. You will see that there are existing laws that protect individuals from discrimination. You will see that human oversight is important throughout all of the different frameworks that we see. But with regards to a list of AI principles, explicitly calling it out as one of their main top line bullet points, you should definitely remember that. Principle number one, safe and effective systems. This principle in the document advocates for diverse input, pre-deployment testing, continuous monitoring, and independent evaluation and monitoring. Diverse input means that our data set should be reliable and bias-free. Of course, that requires that before model training that we've thoroughly vetted the data. And later on, when we get to talking about different types of tools that are at our disposal for evaluating systems before they're online, one of those tools is going to be data sheets for data sets, which essentially tracks the data lineage for us. And, and we'll get to that, but just know at this point that that's one tool that we can use to help ensure that our models are being trained on diverse input. I think the rest of these here are all pretty self-explanatory. We want to test the system before it's deployed. We want to monitor the system throughout its life cycle. And when possible, we want to bring in external auditors to test the system for us. You can imagine that if we only have internal auditing, that those results, that process can be shaped by the organization. Whereas if we have to account for external stakeholders, such as a third party auditor, perhaps that is responsible for certification or providing some type of compliance certification or documentation, being accountable to them is likely going to be better for the organization and better for the public than just being accountable to our internal stakeholders. The second principle is algorithmic discrimination protection. And just to be clear, algorithmic discrimination occurs when automated systems contribute to unjustified different treatment or impacts. And I've taken that directly from the document. 
And this principle advocates for systems being designed and used equitably, that there are proactive equity assessments here, just meaning that we're not waiting until the model is being used, that it's out in the public, that we start discovering that there are bias or discrimination problems. We want to address all of those potential issues proactively. And similar with the first principle where there is the use of representative data. We also want to ensure that the model is accessible, that any public facing or reporting documentation is in plain language. Another tool that's going to be at our disposal for evaluating models is called an algorithmic impact assessment. And there's one whole lecture later on that's going to cover a lot of these different tools and, and impact assessments. So hold on tight for that. And finally, that these different assessments are, are published, for example, available on the organization website. The third principle is data privacy. Again, this should be pretty straightforward. This advocates for the protection from abusive practices. We want to make sure that the data subject is able to exercise agency over the collection, use, access, transfer, and deletion of their data. Again, remember that data subject is a term of art. It refers to the individual from whom we are collecting the data. And when sensitive data is being used to train a model or as input for a live model, that we're only using sensitive data when necessary for the particular business function, that that sensitive data is protected by some type of ethical review, and that there are use prohibitions on that data. With regards to use prohibitions, for example, think back to our first lecture in this domain when we were discussing the fair information practices. We talked about purpose specification, data minimization, and use limitation. Those would all mean that we're telling individuals what we're collecting it, why we're collecting it, and we're only using data for the specific purpose for which we stated. We are not using it for secondary purposes. Also with regards to data privacy, we wanna make sure that the AI systems are not being used for unchecked surveillance. Now, I have to qualify the word or the use of unchecked here. You may think that any type of surveillance is inappropriate, but think for just a moment about the type of surveillance that goes on in an airport security check, for example. During COVID-19, there were thermal imaging scans that could identify if an individual had a fever. This is indeed a form of surveillance, but there are different types of privacy measures and screens that can be put in place to protect the identity, the privacy of the individual, so that the thermal imaging device only sees fever or no fever. Similarly, the second point here helps to qualify that. Surveillance technologies should be subject to increased oversight. That includes pre-deployment assessments and a privacy and civil liberties impact assessment. So again, before the technology is deployed, we have a group of folks that are looking at the impact that this system would have not only on privacy, but on individual civil liberties as well. We talked about notice during our conversation on the FIPS, and explanation I think is pretty straightforward. This principle advocates for knowing that an automated system is being used. So similar to a privacy notice that says, hey, we're collecting this information for these reasons, an AI system notice would say, hey, you're interacting with a chatbot, for example, or if an AI system is being used to support a doctor in their diagnosis of a patient, the patient would know that, hey, your doctor has used an AI tool to reach this conclusion. Similarly, the individuals that are subject to the system should understand the system's impact and outcomes. And any explanations, any impact assessments, especially those that are public facing, should be in plain language. The final principle here for the White House blueprint for an AI Bill of Rights is human alternatives. And the full principle is human alternatives, consideration, and fallback. A human alternative would mean that an individual may have the right to reject or contest a decision that was made by automated decision making. For example, if they disagree with the results of a bank loan application, they can appeal to have that application reviewed by a human. Human consideration, meaning that there's a human involved at some point in the system. This is also sometimes referred to as human in the loop or human on the loop, 
When you think of using your GPS machine, either on your phone or that's built into your car, you may often be given multiple possibilities. Which of these three routes do you want to take, for example? Or another one that I often encounter is when you're mid-route, if there's an accident coming up or if there's a detour, your system may alert you that, hey, we found a faster route. Would you like to take this or would you like to stay the course? You as the driver have a choice to guide the algorithm in that sense. And so that's human consideration, either human in the loop or human on the loop. And of course, human fallback, meaning that if there's a problem with the system, that there is a process in place for humans to take over. This principle also advocates for ADM opt-out. ADM is another acronym that we're going to see a lot. It means automated decision-making. Some people also write it as algorithmic decision-making. But I think 90% of the time when I've come across that algorithm, it's been automated decision-making. And there should be an opt-out where appropriate for users. Escalation to human review option, which I just mentioned. Concerning systems within sensitive domains, there should be meaningful oversight. And finally, reporting should include a description of human governance. And so how are human beings using this system? How are they monitoring it? What type of maintenance is done? How involved are they in decision making, for example? In this lecture, we have reviewed the White House blueprint for an AI Bill of Rights. We started by defining what the OSTP is. Again, this is the Office of Science and Technology Policy within the White House. It's responsible for advising the US president and one of their primary missions, perhaps the top line mission, is to strengthen American science and technology. We then went over the five principles, which are safe and effective systems, algorithmic discrimination protections, data privacy, notice and explanation, and human alternatives, consideration, and fallback.